Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to another daily vlog. If you are new today, my name is Austin and I'm a second year medical student at UIC in Chicago. I'm excited to have you here. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on a video. I hope all of you are ready to have a very productive morning because you have a lot to do today and I'm ready to tackle all of our tasks. So if you're new, I want to give you a little bit of a background. Right now, I'm currently finishing up my second year of medical school. We're in our final block. So can you believe it? Just a few more weeks and I'll be done with all my medical school classes. So we're finishing up our reproductive and endocrine unit. And after that, we'll have one more board exam or one more block exam, excuse me. And then I have my board exam in February, which I'll be studying for more intensely in the coming months and weeks. So today we're actually starting off with the UWorld Step 1 Question Bank. We're gonna be doing 40 questions. I just wanna get my reps in because again, preparing for step one is a question-based exam. I'd say it all the time. Best way to do better on these question-based exams is to do more questions. So I wanna get my reps in for today and I've noticed that if I don't do the UWorld blocks first thing in the morning, I end up just not doing questions at all that day because things just come. So I'm just gonna make sure I get this done, review the questions, and then, like you might've guessed it, we're gonna tackle those Anki cards and get those out of the way. And then we have an exciting day today because we're gonna be driving to the hospital in Chicago and doing our hospital visit where we get to see some real patients. So I'm hopefully gonna bring you in on that and just let you know a little bit more about what's going on. But that's all I have for this morning. Hope you're staying productive as well. And we're gonna get after this question bank. I'll catch up with all of you after. Now, for those of you wondering what I'm listening to, it's just white noise, so I'm taking my exams, it's just keep me focused, don't want any other music playing so you're distracted, or also you don't want any music playing because you won't be able to listen to music during your exam, so I'm trying to really stimulate that exam testing environment, and that's what we're listening to. So let's get into our tests. everyone so we're all wrapped up with the 40 question block we actually did pretty well we finished a little bit early and I got an 80 percent so 32 out of 40 and I'm gonna show you a quick analysis so you get a little bit more insight on what I look at when I'm going through these uh, practice problems all right so what I like to do is go to the test analysis and take a look at what's going on over here so five incorrect to correct that's good and then zero correct to incorrect so that's always a good sign and then on the results, before I go into any specific questions, I like to look at the ones that I marked and the ones that I got incorrect. So this one, number eight, we'll have to take a look at that because I didn't mark it, which, may, which means when I don't mark it, I think that I'm 100% confident, obviously. Um, that doesn't always work out, so that was one that I got wrong. But what's nice is that the ones that I got incorrect, it's mostly all the ones that I had marked. And so these ones, when I mark them, it just means I'm not 100% sure. And so I look at them again before I submit my test. And so you can see all the ones I'm getting wrong, I had marked. So I had some uncertainty going in. And then most of the other ones I got correct, except for that number eight. So we'll take a look at that in a bit. My goodness I choked so bad I hate getting questions wrong when you know you feel like you have all the information to get it right and you just rush through it so don't go too fast on these if you're taking these questions as well make sure you read every detail and the key thing is to realize that the question tellers are telling you something for a reason and you just have to pick up on it so you're kind of like a detective and I was not a good detective here and I won't bore you with the whole question bank, but I'm going to show you that question eight because it's the one where I told you guys I didn't mark because I thought it was 100% correct and it didn't work out. All right, so pretty much in classic Austin fashion, it's been 35 seconds on a question I think I got right and move on. I chose hydroxylation because I saw easy bruising like right away, skimmed through everything else. Pretty dumb because I actually highlighted hyperextensible skin because the issue here is not a vitamin C deficiency causing a lack of hydroxylation, which needs vitamin C, but it's a Ehlers-Danlos syndrome issue. So you can see the hyperextensible skin and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. There's an issue with the 
and terminal propeptide removal. So I probably should have got that right, but only 23% of other people picked up on that. So it's clearly not an easy question and I can live with it. That's why we're taking practice tests and learn from our mistakes. So we'll get better, we'll get better. This chair here has definitely clocked in hundreds of Anki hours. As you can see, when I finished reviewing the question bank problems, I had to jump over here to this side of the room to get my Anki cards done, really get into a comfortable location, not to strain my neck and just get, get going. So glad to be all wrapped up for the day. Now it's officially time to go upstairs, take a shower, grab a bite and look a little less like we just woke up. And then we'll be going to my last hospital visit ever. The next time I'll be in the hospitals after this, I will be a rotating M3 medical student and hopefully learning a little bit more about what it means to be a doctor and what to actually do as a physician as opposed to learning 30,000 flashcards. So I'm looking forward to that. Let's get going. As my boy McDreamy would say, it's a beautiful day to save lives. Or if you're a medical student like me, it's a beautiful day to follow an M4 around and not sound like an idiot. So let's do our best. everyone so we just got to Chicago I'm in the parking garage for the hospital so I'm about to go in I'm gonna quickly tell you what's going on today and then I'll probably just give you a recap when I'm done later on so pretty much we're doing a hospital visit and basically what this is is I'm gonna go in with an M4 and we're gonna be talking to real patients so I think this is awesome because you learn so much from talking to real patients compared to standardized patients because you actually get a feel for how patients respond and just like real diagnoses uh, I think standardized patients are great for practicing clinical skills but Sometimes it's kind of hard to communicate with them in the same way as a normal patient because with a standardized patient, you might ask them like, you know, what brings you in today? And they'll say stomach pain and that's it. And then you have to, you know, practice eliciting, you know, when did the stomach pain start? You know, have you had this pain before? You know, is it worse in the morning, worse in the evening? So, I mean, it's good, I guess, for students who are trying to make us practice eliciting those questions, getting the information. But honestly, a real patient, you're like, what brings you in today? And they're like, so I had stomach pain, it started three days ago, it's really bad in the morning, I can't do this, I can't do that. So they tell you almost everything you need to know and you know that's how it's gonna be in real life too. So I think that's why I like doing these hospital visits a lot more than standardized patients. So basically what we're gonna do today is a history of present illness. So we're gonna see what's going on with the patient. Then once we're done interviewing or talking with the patient, we're gonna be doing an assessment and a plan. And so what's nice with these uh, hospital visits is that we actually can compare our, our assessment and our plan with the one the actual attending uh, comes up with since they're actually admitting the patient and so that's good for us because there's no pressure on us we're not really determining anything any treatment or anything like that we're just practicing and so hopefully we can figure out what's going on make an assessment and plan and that should be similar to what the attending did but if not then it's good practice so it's low risk and that's what's good for us as medical students and so yeah we're gonna go inside now to the hospital we're gonna see what's going on i'm gonna get my mask on and yeah, we'll see what type of patients we have today and I'll let you all know what we saw and if there's anything interesting. All right, so we just left the parking garage and now we're gonna go into the hospital. It's a windy day today, so it's super windy. Okay, Whew. so pretty long day. Uh, we didn't have many patients available to round on because they have to be like COVID negative 
and then just be willing to like talk to students and stuff. But I had a really awesome patient, of course, not going to share any like vitals or information that's going to give it away, but it was super cool. He's a really nice guy. Uh, basically just had some troubles with alcoholism and withdrawals and so we just asked a lot of questions pertaining to that and gave him some medication to help out and then he was getting discharged today too so yeah nothing major nothing crazy but uh, yeah it was a good time it was a good experience uh, just good talking to him and then working with my tutor working on things that could do better I forgot to ask a few questions pertaining to like substance use and whenever it's time you have a patient that comes in with an alcohol use disorder then you want to follow up with like substance use questions so yeah I Sometimes it's hard, I guess, in the hospital setting because the patient already saw the doctor. And so you're just basically reiterating what the physician already did and asking like the same questions. So, I mean, in terms of diagnosis, assessment and plan, pretty much got the exact same thing as what we were supposed to get and how to treat it. So that was good. But yeah, I could have asked a couple more follow-up questions on other illicit drug use, things like that, but he didn't use anything else besides uh, alcohol. So it didn't really affect um, my judgment or my assessment, anything like that. But yeah, it was pretty good overall, and yeah, we're gonna head home, and that was basically all we have for today. So, yeah, it was good, it was nice, and we're gonna get going now. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in. So that is a wrap on our day in the life of a medical student. It's my last hospital visit, and so for the next couple of weeks to months, I'm just gonna be studying for my medical boards and dedicated, so not too much exciting stuff going on, but I have a ton of backlogs for vlogs that I did the past year, mostly travel ones, but I'll throw in some Anki videos here and there too. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on a video. Thanks again for tuning in and hope all of you have a great night.